BIOS's job, the firmware on your computer, one of its jobs is to locate a bootable device. Once it runs, it will then run when you hit power, it runs automatically. Uh, and its job is to find a bootable device. And in most cases, how you configure your BIOS, you tell it what device to look for first, yes? So we'll say look for the hard drive first, then look for the DVD or Blu-ray, then maybe the flash drive, and then at home you probably never use the NIC, but in an enterprise environment many times we want to boot to the NIC. So this is the most common bootable so the BIOS will actually look in the configuration and say, okay, let me go find a hard drive. All right, so what does it find when it finds the hard drive? Let's take a look. So here's the structure of the hard drive. Once the BIOS does find a hard drive on a SATA cable, the first thing that it does is it looks for an important structure. This is found on sector one. And I would also, in the way that hard, hardware is, hardware always starts with zero. Software always starts with one. So I'm going to call it sector zero. In other words, this is the very first sector on the hard drive. This is called your master boot record. Very important. This is called your master boot record. So bias locates the hard drive, finds a, on the other end of a SATA cable, finds a SATA hard drive. The first sector is red, and it is what we call the master boot record. Inside the master boot record are basically two elements. One, a, some executable code. There's actually some assembly language code written in there. And there is also the partition table. And it reads that partition table. This is very important. Bias needs to find the bootable partition. Bias needs to find the bootable partition. When it finds the NDR, it runs and executes the code that is in there. That executable code reads the partition and says, oh, I see how they partition this hard drive. They just created one big C drive. Okay. So in the, this will read, this code reads the partition table. This is very small amount of data. This is only, this sector is only, I think, 512 bytes. Not a lot of data. It's not like it's got a big program in it. It's just one sector, 512 bytes. But in 512 bytes, we're able to read the partition table and we can understand exactly how you partition the hard drive. In the partition table, as we look at the partition table, it basically says this. We know that sector zero is reserved for the master boot record. So the partition table will say, and I'm just using arbitrary terms just so that you can understand. From sector one, from sector one, let's say the last sector is 10,000 on the hard drive. From sector one to sector 10,000, represents the active partition. That's what your partition will say. If you had two partitions, it would say from sector one to 5,000 or whatever, and it would say, okay, that's the active partition, and then you've got another partition. So the partition table is basically going to say, it's going to tell exactly where you start, what sector starts your partition, and where does it end? It's just that simple. 
and you must have an active partition. This is going to be the partition that will boot the operating system. Okay? So my active partition is going, you may have four partitions, you may have ten partitions, but one partition must be active. That's the partition that's going to boot the operating system. All right. So let's let's say that this is the active partition. Master boot record is not included. So from sector one to sector ten thousand represents the partition that we're going to boot to. The next sector, okay, inside. Now we know that. Starting at sector one and it ends at 10,000, yes? This is the active partition. This is the partition that we're going to boot. And this is typically what we call what? C drive. Yeah, this is what we call C drive. All of you know this is C drive. But listen to me very carefully. I'm going to blow this out of the water in a minute because... Microsoft, this is the way we did it all the way through XP, all the way we did it historically, all operating systems did it like this. But when Microsoft brought in Vista, listen to me carefully, Windows 7, Windows 8, Microsoft is going to change this. So hang on, we're going to talk about it. So the first sector in the active partition, now I'm inside, everyone, this one's outside, yes? Mm -hmm. This one's inside. This one is called the boot sector. This is very important. This is where viruses used to love to go. So if I was a virus writer and I wanted to infect you every time you booted up, what I would do is write a small amount of code I would take what was in here, overwrite it, put my slick little code in there, and I would add my virus to the operating system every time you boot it up. Was that fun? These were called boot sector viruses. In the boot sector is basically the information to boot the operating system. Listen carefully. When you, the boot sector, this, both the master boot record and the boot sector are created when you install Windows. When you install Windows, those two sectors are created. That's the job of the installation program. Yes? So inside of the active partition, there are, um, there are other parts Partition. You could. In other words, in this case, I just said, I'm Joe Blow at home. I just take all my hard drive and make it C drive. Okay? Is that, is that no, what we normally do? We typically do that. The, the, pe the person responsible for creating these special sectors on the hard drive are the, the installation of Windows. Now, what happens when I install? So what happens when I install Linux? What does Linux do? It also creates those. So no matter what operating system installs on the hard drive, if it's going to be bootable, the operating system that you install is going to create the boot sector and the master boot record. Yes? Yes. So that's, that's who's responsible for creating this. Now, here's the difference. The master boot record that Linux creates, listen carefully, and the master boot record that Windows creates will always be exactly the same. But the boot sector that Linux creates and the boot sector that Windows creates is going to be different. This has to be the same for both operating systems, but this one will be customized so that it, it installs what? And if I'm Linux, Linux will customize this so that it will boot up. Okay? 
Does that make sense? Yes. All right, everybody comfortable. These are two very important. You must understand the boot sector and the master boot record. These are two critical structures. The NBR is not, is not a part of the active partition. The boot sector is. Now listen carefully. Microsoft doesn't want you to see or touch or modify or change the boot sector. So you say, well, Mr. Mr. Vanderbilt, I've been using Windows forever. I've never seen that. That's right, and you won't either. Because Microsoft doesn't want Joe, Grandma, to see the boot sector. Why would it be a disaster for Grandma and Grandpa to see the boot sector? Thank you. It wouldn't take but just a few minutes and Grandma would hose that boot sector. So just to give you an idea, this is Wikipedia's dissertation on the boot sector. It is very complex. Don't think that these are, are any way uh, simple or easy. This is the master boot record. This is actually the structure inside the NBR. It's 512 bytes. It is, listen, it is very complex. I'm just giving you the general overview so that you understand it. But if you go to Wikipedia and start diving into MBR, you will fall asleep in about three seconds. Okay? It will just absolutely, you'll go, okay, sure, that, I understand everything you say. So when we talk about these, we're talking about some really complicated stuff. Okay? Everybody there? This is not simple stuff. Little kids didn't grow up five years old and start writing stuff. This is very complicated. Now the boot sector is very important because in the boot sector it is going to, listen very carefully, the boot sector is very important because in the boot sector will be the name, listen carefully, the name of the first file that begins Windows. Doesn't there have to be a first file? Does a Windows have to start somewhere? There is. There is always the first file that has to be run in order to get the whole thing going. Yes? Yes. yes. So, guess what? You need to know those names. So let's talk about those file names. There must be one file, whether it's Linux, Unix, the Mac, Windows, that starts the operating system, yes? And it's in the boot sector that we have that name. So, let's take a look. Uh, do I have enough room? I need to change screens here. Let's see if I have enough room to write. I think I do. So, with Windows XP, We'll call these boot files. These are the files that boot the operating system. Then we'll call Vista 7 and 8. Very, very different. The first file that boots the operating system for XP is called NTLDR. No extension. That's the name of the file. Right there. NT loader. It's called NT loader. NT LDR. No extension. It's not dot doc. It's not dot executable. It's just, it has no extension. In Vista, it's called boot MGR. That's the name of the file. These are the two files that launch Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, and 8.1. So if you look inside the boot sector, you will actually see that file name. If you look in the boot sector, you'll actually see that file name. And by looking in the boot sector and seeing the file name, you know what operating system is going to be started. So every one of you need to know what is the name of the file that launches the operating system. Anti-loader is what starts XP. Boot manager is what starts Windows 7, 8, and 8.1. So this is how operating systems boot. The BIOS initializes the motherboard. It then looks into how what you have set up in your 
uh, non-volatile RAM, it'll say, okay, what does he want to boot up to first? And it'll say, you've chosen a hard drive. Yes? Because you had to do that, or you just left it default. It'll say, okay, let's go into memory. Oh, he wants to boot from the hard drive. Is there a hard drive at the end of the cable? Yep, there it is. Let's read the sector zero. zero. We're going to read sector zero. We're going to read the master boot record. The master boot record will then say, look, he's only got one partition. It's uh, from sector one to sector 10,000. Then it's going to say, okay, let's go to sector one. That's where this active partition begins. That first sector is called the boot, boot, boot sector. sector. It will then read that sector and it will look for the name of the boot yeah, file. Once it knows the name, then it's going to expect that file to be only one place. Now hang, hang on here because I'm going to blow your mind here in a minute. Okay, is it getting fun? This is very cool. It expects these two files to always be what is that? Give me more technically correct. When I put that in front of you, you should have a very technically correct answer. The root. the root of C drive. It expects those files to be in the root of C. So, if these files are very, very important, very, very critical in order for Windows to run, what do you think Microsoft is going to do with that file when it puts it in the root directory? I've seen it. It's going to hide it. It's going to make it system. It's going to make it read only. It doesn't want Grandma, Joe Blow, uh, Billy Bob from Kentucky to mess with the file, yes? And so Microsoft, it's not going to be easy to find that file because Microsoft, at, right off the bat, is going to hide the file, make it system, and make it read only. Because if Joe can see it, he'll probably what? Do we do? <laughs> Got it. And then he'll wonder why his machine doesn't boot. Now keep in mind, when we get into operating systems like Windows 7, listen carefully, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, Microsoft secures the root. And it doesn't allow users, in other words, when you log on and you are a user, you cannot mess with this directory. Yes? You can. Now, if you log on as an administrator with different rights, then you can add files to the root, you can rename files, but if you're logged on as a user, not an administrator, then you do not have rights to add files, rename files, change files, do anything. Because Microsoft is protecting that root directory, because in it are critical files. And so let's pop into Windows 8.1. I'm going to, first of all, go to C drive. <clears throat> and I'm at the root. And uh, in my case, I've already went to view. And notice I have allowed what? Notice up here? So what have I allowed myself to see? items. So I want to see extensions, and I also ask to see what? Yeah. Hidden items. So if that was unchecked, I probably, now I can go to options, and I can go to view, and this is where, this is where you as a tech need to be able to go. <clears throat> so if I want to see these system files, these very critical things, then I'm going to have to say do what? And I'm going to also say, have to uncheck, okay, so if this is checked, it, they will be hidden. And this is the way we want it for Joe, Grandma, Auntie, Uncle, yes. But many times you're going to have to go in here and uncheck that because we need to see these critical files. They're not going to be seen on them. So this is, a <clears throat> this is the first thing that you have to do in order to see these. Now, I'm going to, I'm 